In our last video, we decoded cholesterol numbers. What your lipid profile means, how to interpret LDL, HDL, triglycerides and why ratios matter. Now comes the real question. How do you track your cholesterol correctly? When should you test? How often should you test? See, keeping track of cholesterol isn't a one-time activity. It's an ongoing process to ensure that your heart stays healthy for the long haul. Namaste. Welcome to HG CardioWise. I am Dr. Ramon Kar and today we'll answer. First, when should you start cholesterol testing and how often? Second, do children need a cholesterol test? Third, what an ideal lipid profile should include because many patients only test total cholesterol. Fourth, which cholesterol numbers actually matter over time? Fifth, why tracking trends is more important than a single test result? And finally, how technology can help you stay on the top of your heart health. Many people assume cholesterol testing is something you do in your 50s or 60s, but waiting too long could be risky. Here's when you should actually start checking. So let's start with the general guidelines. For healthy adults, it is recommended to begin cholesterol testing at age 20 with follow-ups every five years. Now, after reaching the age of 40, even if you are in good health, you should consider testing every one to two years. Now, for those with diabetes, obesity, hypertension, or a family history of heart disease, annual testing or as advised by your doctor is essential. And this is irrespective of age. Additionally, if you already have high cholesterol or are on medications, more frequent monitoring, that is uh, every three to six months, is necessary to track your progress. Catching problems early can help you take action through lifestyle changes, medications, or both to stay heart healthy. Now let's talk about something most people ignore. Cholesterol testing in kids sounds unnecessary, right? But childhood is when cholesterol problems can start, especially if they run in the family. Now, genetic cholesterol disorders like familial hypercholesterolemia are often underdiagnosed. These children appear healthy, but they may already have dangerously high LDL values by age 10. With rising childhood obesity, poor eating habits, and screen time overload, even children from average households are showing early signs of metabolic syndrome. So what are the pediatric testing recommendations? The first test should be between the ages of 9 to 11 years, especially if there's a family history of high cholesterol or early heart disease. For kids with obesity, diabetes, or other risk factors, testing can begin as early as between the ages of 2 to 8. And then for teenagers, that is between 17 to 21 years, they should be again tested before adulthood. So catching cholesterol issues early can prevent serious heart problems in adulthood. And no, medications are not always needed. Early lifestyle changes can work wonders. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see is patients getting an incomplete cholesterol test. Many people only test total cholesterol, thinking that's enough. But total cholesterol alone tells you nothing about your actual heart disease risk. So what should an ideal lipid profile include? So first, it includes total cholesterol, that is the sum of all cholesterol in your blood. The desirable values are below 200 milligram percent. But remember, a high total might be due to high HDL also, which isn't always bad. But this alone isn't enough. Next is LDL or bad cholesterol, the key number for heart disease risk. Now we know excess LDL can deposit in artery walls and form plaques. The optimal values are below 100 milligram percent for most people. For those with higher heart disease risk, doctors might aim for less than 70 milligram percent or even low. Values more than 160 milligram percent are considered higher. Next is HDL or good cholesterol, that protective cholesterol. So healthy values are above 40 milligram percent for men and more than 50 milligram percent for women. Recent research shows that HDL's function is complex. Not just the number, but how effectively it removes cholesterol is important. Still, higher HDL often correlates with better heart health. Next comes triglycerides. So this is a type of fat from overconsumption of calories, sugars, and certain carbs. Normal values are less than 150 milligram percent. Now, very high values, that is over 500 milligram percent, can lead to pancreatitis and need urgent attention. Next is non-HDL cholesterol. Now, this is a more comprehensive risk marker after LDL. Now, some doctors look at this, especially if the triglycerides are high. Now, non-HDL should generally be no more than 30 milligram percent above your LDL goal. Next come the cholesterol ratios. Now, this is important for a broader understanding of lipid abnormalities. 
the commonly derived uh, ratios are total cholesterol to hdl ratio and ldl to hdl ratio you might have heard of some advanced tests like ldl particle number lipoprotein a or apolipoprotein b now they can offer extra insights uh, like lipoprotein a elevated levels may explain family heart disease risk apo b reflects the number of bad particles in your blood stream and finally ldl particle size so smaller dense ldl may be riskier than larger ldl now these tests aren't always necessary a standard lipid profile along with your risk factors are usually enough for most people but if you have a strong family history of early heart disease or very high cholesterol that doesn't respond to usual treatment your doctor might suggest advanced testing see your lab might be reliable but your cholesterol does fluctuate it's affected by what you eat your activity levels and even stress now here are the factors that can impact your cholesterol test first is diet changes a sudden shift in eating habits like say binging on a high carb or high fat food even 2 to 3 days prior to testing can elevate your triglycerides second is fasting versus non fasting status for decades we were told to fast for 8 to 12 hours before a cholesterol test so no food no coffee just water The idea was that eating affects triglycerides and therefore might skew your results. However, newer guidelines and larger studies suggest that LDL, HDL and total cholesterol levels do not change drastically whether you have eaten or not. That said, your doctor might still ask you to fast if your triglycerides are typically very high, that is uh, above 400 mg per cent or if they need any specific test. So always clarify with your doctor. we will discuss regarding this debate in another video third is medications now some drugs like steroids or diuretics can raise ldl or triglycerides fourth alcohol and smoking now alcohol can significantly boost triglycerides smoking negatively impacts your hdl values then comes recent illness so if you have had a flu or any infection it can temporarily lower your cholesterol values and finally biological variability research shows that total cholesterol can naturally fluctuate by uh, about 11% throughout the year so minor differences between tests aren't always a big deal now let me give you some actionable tips for a better test first avoid alcohol so try to skip it at least 24 hours before a test alcohol can spike your triglycerides second avoid heavy oily meals the evening before and preferably up to 48 hours prior to the test as it may elevate your triglyceride levels third schedule consistently if you want to compare results over time try to do the test around the same time of the day and with a similar routine fourth check with your doctor ask if you need to fast or if any non fasting test is fine for you and if any medications have to be stopped fifth be honest if you are supposed to fast but ended up having your morning breakfast just tell your doctor it's crucial for interpreting the results correctly imagine checking your bank balance only once a year that wouldn't give you the full picture of your financial health right the same applies to cholesterol a single high reading doesn't mean disaster but a trend of rising ldl over time is a red flag we often ask our patients to repeat a lipid profile 3 months after the first abnormal test so whether you're making lifestyle changes or taking medications trends help track your progress see keeping track of your cholesterol over time doesn't have to be complicated with modern apps and online lab reports you can easily monitor your numbers now there are mobile apps like uh, healthify me or my fitness pal they help to not only record your cholesterol values but create a visual trend for easy interpretation they also log your diet track exercise and monitor progress now many apps can help you set reminders for your next lipid profile test We also have variables like smart watches or fitness bands. They can monitor related parameters like uh, heart rate and activity levels, which indirectly affect cholesterol. So work with your doctor to set realistic goals based on your risk factors. For example, Indians are more prone to atherosclerosis, that is, blocked arteries, and diabetes due to their genetics. So stricter LDL goals might be needed. So if you are prescribed statins or other cholesterol-lowering drugs. regular follow up tests can ensure that they are working effectively and without side effects so now you know cholesterol testing isn't a one time thing and it's not just about getting a perfect number understanding your lipid profile is easier once you know what the numbers represent how lifestyle factors affect them and whether you need or do not need to fast a few parting reminders first start testing early 
Test more frequently if you are at risk and follow age-based recommendations. Second, focus on trends. A single high or low reading isn't everything. Check changes over time and use technology to stay consistent. Third, lifestyle is king. Exercise regularly, eat balanced meals, quit smoking and watch your alcohol intake. These can all improve your results naturally. Fourth, stay informed, guidelines evolve, so keep the conversation open with your doctor. With this knowledge, you can now walk into the next blood test feeling empowered. If this video helped you, hit like, subscribe and share this with your loved ones. Your heart health is in your hands, take charge today. Stay heart smart and I'll see you in the next video where we'll discuss how dietary changes can help you reduce your cholesterol values.